Good morning. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Beautiful hot morning. It's good to have all of you guys here this, this morning. Last night we had a family event out in Thorndale, and I tell you what, it didn't matter if we were inside or outside. It took us forever to cool down with all that heat going on out there. We were driving back around 10 o'clock, and it was still in the 90s. Holy moly. Lord, we need some rest from that. This Sunday is an interesting Sunday in the church year. We uh, had Pentecost last week, and we're now into the season of Pentecost. But right after Pentecost, after we introduced the Holy Spirit to the narrative of Christianity and faith and the Bible story, we go into Holy Trinity Sunday, and we look at the triune God. But if you pay attention to our readings this morning, they're still going back to that Pentecost. So we have this little bit of tension where we want to continue our story from last week, and we want to talk about the Trinity this week. This morning we'll look at, and we will talk about the Holy Trinity and His place in our life and the uniqueness of the Trinity. Uh, This morning our service will be projected over my screen eventually as we get the computer restarted, it looks like. And well, you can follow along that way. If you like a bulletin, we have some paper bulletins. Um, you can also get a bulletin from our website at kingofkingstx.org, and you can download the bulletin to your phone and follow along that way. And if you're home, of course, you are welcome to uh, follow along with the words that will eventually be below me on the screen. I invite anybody who's watching at home to uh, share this video so other people can participate in church with us this morning. As it is Holy Trinity Sunday, what we're going to do is uh, go through the Athanasian Creed. We've broken it up into four parts. So through the service, uh, leading up to the sermon, we'll go through different parts of the Creed in continuous order. So you'll see that this morning we'll start with our invocation and then dive into the first portion of the Creed. We'll sing our first song and then go to a second portion of our Creed and we'll flow that way through the service. So I invite you to stand as we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. All right, into the creed. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Christian faith. And the Christian faith is this. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. For the Godhead of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit is one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. This is most certainly true. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is an invitation. Come thou almighty King.
continue with part two of the creed. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father, infinite. The Son, infinite. The Holy Spirit, infinite. The Father, eternal. The Son, eternal. The Holy Spirit, eternal. And yet, there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated, or three infinites, but one uncreated, and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son, almighty. The Holy Spirit Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, and the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. This is the most certainly true. Please be seated as we hear God's word. Good morning. The first reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verse 14 and 22 through 36. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore, let all of Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you sacrificed, both Lord and Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Out of the respect for the gospel, please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. The Jews answered Jesus, we are not right, are we not right in saying that you are are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus said, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. Yet I do not speak my own glory, there is one who speaks it and he is the judge. 
Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, as did the prophets. And yet you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say, He is our God. But you have not known Him. I know Him. If I were to say that I do not know Him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know Him, and I keep His word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it. And was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet 50 years old, and you've seen Abraham? Jesus said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at Jesus, but he hid himself and went out of the temple. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Not every day you think of Jesus hiding himself from people uh, because they might be violent to him, but here we have it. Jews are mad. But what do we believe? Let's continue with part three of the Athanasian Creed. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord so also are we prohibited by the Christian religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created, nor begotten, but received. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another, none is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as have been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. This is most certainly true. I invite you to have a seat as we go into our hymn of the day. It is a medley. We're singing a praise to the Lord, the Almighty, as our verses. And we're going to um, Holy God, Holy God, we praise your name as our chorus type of thing. So, let us begin.
our fourth and final part of the Athanasian Creed. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages. And He is man, born from the substance of His mother in this age. Equal to the Father with respect to His divinity, less than the Father with respect to His humanity. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ. ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence He will come to judge the living and the dead. At His coming, all people will rise again with their bodies and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good deeds will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And all God's children said, Amen. Here's a statement for you. I am not just me. I am part of a we. I am not just me. I'm part of a we. I would like for you to say that. I am not just me. I'm part of a we. The problem is we like to be part of a we, don't we? No, no. The problem is we like to be focused on me. Our present culture thrives on individuality. We have studies, Business Insider back in 2019 shared a study that told us people are getting older and older and older when they get married. In 1962, did you know this? In 1962, if you're 21 years old, half of the people your age were already married. Today, that's 8%. That's how much change has happened. Now, there are probably other reasons for this than just individuality, but, but those reasons usually tend toward taking care of my position in life, making sure I have an education, I have a job, before I can take care of my family. Did you hear all the eyes and my's in that? There's another word. Blake agrees with me. There's another word, sheeple, that we use. And we use this as a derogative term. Sheeple is the blending of sheep and people into word. It's a term that has come uh, for... for individual thinking that is not thinking for themselves. They're just going with the flow instead of charting his or her own path into the future. Sheeple are people who have lost their individual identity and just want to blend in. And we say, how dare they? We get frustrated with them. Oh, your followers are just a bunch of sheeple. When Barack Obama suggested that successful businesses come into being thanks to the help of others, and when Hillary Clinton suggested it takes a village to raise a child, both of them received indignation from the United States. We want to believe that we can do all this stuff by ourselves. And then Marvel... And D 
DC Comics wanted to introduce an idea that we all kind of agree with verbally, but not always when it plays out, is the idea of heroes working together. It's so interesting how different these movies are having all these heroes working together because we really can't have stories with so many main characters. We need stories with individual heroes personal saviors. We prefer to be me and avoiding the we. But we is better than me. We is better than me. It is not good to be alone. 400 years ago, there was an English writer named John Donne who wrote a famous poem about individualism. And you might know some of this poem. You probably know the beginning of the poem, and you probably have quoted the end of the program, poem, and a lot of us don't realize that they're parts of the same piece of work. He said this at the beginning, No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less. Going to the end, any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind. And therefore, never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. No man is an island. No person is an individual alone. When one man dies, it reminds that humanity is dying. The wages of sin is death. To be alone is, in some ways, to die. I thought this was interesting when I read that phrase because I've noticed when, when people get closer to death, they do isolate themselves. You may have hundreds of friends and acquaintances who want to wish you well before you die, who want to say their goodbyes, and we say no. We go into our homes and include only our immediate family and maybe just the bestest of best friends, and we die alone with them. We isolate. This happens in nature with animals, when an animal dies, it leaves the pack or the herd, it curls up in a ball and lays down and dies. No man is an island unto himself. I find this interesting too because with our recent violence and shootings going on in the world, have you read after the fact, usually within... Uh, three days to a week, they find out that the person started isolating themselves from the community. A student who shoots his school quits communicating with friends. And, and relationships get cut off with family. And then they do their violent crime. No man is an island to themselves. God is not just me. This is where the Trinity comes into play. God is not just our me. Our Lord does not reflect this individualistic ideal that we have in our culture today. Because our sin can drive us to be this rugged individual, this hero that stands alone. It disconnects us one from another. We assume God too is like us. And that he is this rugged individual, this standalone hero. We speak of our Lord as God, as him, as the one and only one. Then on days like today, on Trinity Sunday, we, we squish three persons into this one God. This one rugged individual, this one hero who stands alone. And in some mysterious way, in some miraculous way, like the parts of an apple or the three-leaf clover 
of the phases of water or, 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 or any other illustration we can think of to define the Trinity and explain it. Our one God is also the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Not just one, but a we working together. These illustrations, though, don't do justice because, because his identity is so miraculous and mysterious and profound. But in the garden, the Lord said, here's interesting, let us make man in our, plural, image, after our likeness. And man was created male and female, one, and yet two. And then in marriage, the two becoming one again. Because it was not good for man to be alone. God is we. The Father begets a Son, and through whom comes the Holy Spirit. And the Jews we saw in the the Gospel reading, the Jews had a really difficult time with this concept. They had an a difficult time understanding how there is a relationship between Jesus and the Father because they profess the great Shema, the great confession of the Jewish faith that comes from Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is. And yet, you have Jesus coming in and inserting himself into the one. And then, and then in the Acts reading, as you get near the end, you have Jesus giving the Holy Spirit. He shows up on Pentecost just as Jesus promised. So you don't just have the one God with one being inserted in, but now you have one God with two more being inserted in. This didn't make sense to the Jews. It didn't make sense enough that they figured we should kill the guy. We should kill Jesus. Let's pick up stones. Take him out right now. Interestingly, the Muslims struggle with this too. In the Quran, they say, they, Christians, have certainly disbelieved who say, Allah is the third of three. There is no God except the one God. That's what the Quran says. This is why Jesus uses the divine name for himself, the I am, is so repulsive to the Jews. To us, how can he be this I am, but in some mysterious, wonderful, God-like way, our Lord is in fact not just one, but three. He's not just one substance, but three substances. And he's not just three substances, he's the one. The Lord is Father who creates. The Lord is the Son who redeems. The Lord is the Holy Spirit who brings us back to the Word, to the Son, who sanctifies us and makes us holy. And so we probably probably need to be like Abraham and believe. And I just believe Abraham abided in God's Word. The devil would like to come into king of kings. The devil would like to come into your family, into your work, into your lives. And he would like us to divide ourselves, to become islands instead of a continent, to to disconnect instead of unite, to keep apart instead of gather together. The The devil tells us that to be like God is to be alone. That when you're united in Christ, he'll tell you that you are united in your individuality apart from everyone else. And he lies. When he tells you that to be safe is to ignore community. The Lord of the Lord is that we know the Father works through the Son who knows the Father perfectly, and together in their working, you are brought into community. The Father freely sends His Son to you 
into your world, into your lives, and in communion, into your very body, and changes you, working forgiveness from the inside out, creating a new identity with you, and in baptism, uniting you to this miraculous identity. The Son willingly gives up his life on the cross to free you from Satan's lies and individualism and, and, and isolation. The Spirit is willingly breathed out that he might live in you, making his presence realized in your actions and the words you speak and in the thoughts you think. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we keep God's word like Abraham did. We abide in it. We join in the community. And this is what it means to have eternal life. Not a life of isolation, not a life alone. Eternal life is life together in community. A life that stands before the throne of God, worshiping and glorifying him. A life that sees the Father at work. And the Son saving and the Holy Spirit sanctifying. It is not good to be alone. So Jesus has made us one with this Father through the sacrifice of the cross and by enlivening the faith within your hearts today. So the hero in your story isn't a single individual alone. He is community. He is we. He is together working in our lives to bring us to a better end. A hope-filled story of life eternal. Amen. Let us go to that Holy Lord in prayer. O oh, holy God, you are the one and only true God. You are also three distinct and separate persons of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed Father, from you comes all that is, and we are forever indebted to your grace for the gift of life. Lord, you sent your only begotten Son to redeem and save all who are lost. So, Lord Jesus, the Christ, receive our deepest thanks and praise for your work of redemption in which you forgave our sins and secured eternal life for us. Holy Father and gracious Son, we praise you for gifting us the Holy Spirit in our baptisms. O oh, Holy Spirit, we need your help, your comfort, and your intercession on our behalf. Holy Trinity, Glory to you above all, and we love you with all our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you have united us to your miraculous identity through baptism. Send us into the world knowing that we are not alone, that we are going united to you in ministry and in witness. Let our words and our actions tell of your good and gracious presence in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you do not desire the death of the sinner, but that all may live. Grant your Holy Spirit that hearing your word, all people may be brought to repentance and may confess with us their faith in Jesus Christ as Lord. This morning we pray for our mission of the month, the Lutheran Hour Ministries. May their proclamation of your word bring life to the spiritually dead and forgiveness to the sinner. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, we ask your blessings on our vacation Bible school. May our setup today be quick, beautiful, and wise. May all the children learn and remember your good works within creation, especially your work on the cross. And give the leaders and volunteers words that demonstrate love, compassion, wisdom, and encouragement, that they may have perseverance to make it through the week. Lord, in your mercy. Holy God, you have experienced affliction, grief, and death. 
if it is your holy will, we ask you to give healing and peace to all the afflicted, to all the grieving and the dying, but especially to those who have requested our prayers this morning, including Vicki Boriak, Ken Bristow, Jim Brown, Laura Burris, Patricia Hartwig, Gail Holleran, Walter Kipp, Betty Koopsch, Gerald Koopsch, Jim Lawrence, Paul Morancic, Mildred Mabus, Calvin Parnell, Carrie Wagnon, Sharon Watson, Sandy Weber, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, give them all that is needful, that they may endure their illness confident of your presence. Lord, supply them with grace sufficient for every need. Lord, in your mercy. Blessed Father, your Son was the voice that spoke all things into existence, and your grace still preserves all that you have made. You did not abandon your people when they abandoned you, but you have delivered us by the blood of Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may know your word and keep it in faith through all the days of our earthly pilgrimage until we are joined with all the faithful believers in your presence forevermore. We pray through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with some announcements. I believe Sarah might have a thing or two to say today. Just, uh, a few. just a thing or two. <laughs> yes, yes. Sorry. Coming up. All right, y'all. Well, can y'all guess what this week is? Oh, come on. Y'all can be a little bit more excited about it than that. What is this week? Yes. Woo! There we go. Yes, it is so exciting. VBS is this week. Like I said in previous weeks, we have 120 more than that coming this week to hear and learn about Jesus. Like, how awesome is that? So, just a few things just to let y'all know is if y'all have a participant, a kid that's going to VBS, we are doing pre-check today, 12 to 3, right in the fellowship hall. So make sure you pre-check your kid within that time. And then also, VBS setup is today. You can look at how far I got so far with my little cactus over there. We're thinking a lot more than just that. So if y'all would like to come and stay for VBS decorations, we're going to be transforming this sanctuary into a monumental, rocky, deserty, cactusy place. Y'all got that? All right, perfect. So if y'all would like to come and stay uh, and help us out with that, that would be tremendous. And then I'll also be providing food. So, you know, it it will it will have a good time that's followed. Um, and then also, um, if you are a volunteer for VBS, can you just kind of like wave your hand around like, hey, I'm a volunteer for VBS. Look at all these awesome people that are volunteering for VBS. So one thing that I wanted to let y'all know is one, to just like, you know, pray for these volunteers, y'all. <laughs> if you aren't volunteering for VBS, then please pray for our volunteers, but also please pray for those 120 plus kids that are coming. We don't know what their backgrounds are. We don't know if they haven't heard about Jesus before, but we want to pray for these awesome kids that God just keeps moving through them and moving through our volunteers that are helping them learn more about God. So make sure you do that this week. And then also, if you'd like to kind of check in and see what we're doing for VBS, we're going to be live streaming our opening and our closing. So if you love VBS music... Make sure you tune in every day this week. So opening will be at 9 o'clock each morning, and closing will be at 1130. So put that on your calendar so you can watch and see just how awesome these kids are jumping around singing these awesome songs. And then also, we are going to have some kids up next Sunday uh, after VBS to sing a couple songs from VBS and kind of share their story about VBS with y'all. So make sure that y'all come next Sunday as well. I think that's all the... um, that's, I know, right? That's it. <laughs> do you have any announcements before I, I do my thing? I do have two things. Um, first, our life groups. Two of our groups have kicked off last Thursday, and it sounds like they did well, and they were a success. We're glad to have our men's group. I believe the name we're going with is King's Men. Is that correct? That's what I heard. So we have a King's Men men's ministry taking place. They meet on Thursday nights at 6 at Red Horn Coffee House and Brewery Company, Brewing Company. And all the guys 
Um, all you guys are invited to join us and hang out and to have some coffee or have some beer and, en- and enjoy the conversation. We will pray for each other and encourage each other in the faith. And the ladies are doing something similar, but they're eating tasty treats. Um, Miss Judy will shoot out an email later this week as they get ready for their meeting the week after VBS. Um, the Revelation Bible study on Tuesday mornings will begin on the 21st, not this Tuesday, next Tuesday, the Tuesday after VBS when we don't have VBS stuff in the classroom. Uh, finally, our tithes and offerings are, will be gathered either online, you can use the box at the back of the room. Remember, 2% of our offerings each and every month goes to our mission of the month. Um, this month, it's Lutheran Hour Ministries. Um, one month, it was your brother doing ministry in Houston. So we're, we're reaching out both locally, uh, across the state, nationally, globally, to help ministries all around the world taking place. And your offering, as you give, helps us with that. Uh, that's it for my announcements, I think. Right. Back to Sarah. <laughs> Sounds like the new... <laughs> right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the we weather's should, done. Totally have oh, well, oh, wait, wait. I do have one more thing. Oh, um, <laughs> the gentleman who made our stained glass windows. We have three here. We have an, another, uh, two more in the doors. And we have another in the fellowship hall, big stained glass window in the fellowship hall with a path of salvation. His name was Ralph Reinke. He is turning, forgive me, 90-something years old. And his family were like 95, 95 years old. That's a few decades of life right there. Um, His family is going to meet, and they uh, remembered him designing the stained glass window, and they would love to have some words of encouragement, how the stained glass window has benefited the ministry of King of Kings or how it's been meaningful to you. We have some cards in the back. I know uh, Tom has one in hand there. But if you could write a note, we will send them to the Ryan Key family to share with him on his birthday or during his birthday celebration. So if you got something to say, beautiful, wonderful, and encouragement for him, I think this is a time they want to remind him of how meaningful his life has been. This is that opportunity. Now I'm done. Okay. All right. So now I'm back up. So uh, one of the things we love doing here is recognizing our seniors that graduated high school. So I'm going to invite Caden on up here. Uh, We're going to celebrate him. He just graduated from Liberty Hill. Can we give him a round of applause? All right, so Caden, in one word, can you describe your four years of high school? <laughs> I think that was, that was perfect. Wow. All right, so what are your plans after high school? Uh, yeah, I'm going to take a Woohoo, awesome job. All right. Well, we are so excited for you. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. You got to come back. You got to come back. You don't get off that easy. Oh, no. <laughs> He's like, I'm out. Okay. All right. So first off, we just wanted to say we are so proud of you, and we're so excited to see where God takes you in, your, uh, in the rest of your life and with this next chapter. So before he goes, we want to pray over you. All right? So I want to ex- uh, invite everybody to extend your hand out, so we're going to just pray over Caden. All right. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for Caden and just how awesome of a person he is, God. God, we just ask that you bless him along his way as he goes off to college to do all the other amazing things in his life, God. We know you have amazing, amazing plans for him. God, That we, we just ask that you continue to show your presence to him throughout his college journey because, God, college can be so much fun, but it can also be hard and tricky as well. But, God, we just ask that you continuously show him your presence and your plan for his life so that he can continue to walk in his faith with you and his walk in life. We love you, God. We thank you so much for the blessing of Caden, and we just ask that you be with him and continue to bless him as he goes off to college. In your name we pray, and all God's children said, amen. Amen. So before you leave again, I have one other blessing for you. So this comes from Colossians 1, 9 through 12, and it goes like this. Since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and pleasing to him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, 
being strengthened with the power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. So as you go off into college, we just like want to let you know that we are going to be praying for you along the way, and we are just so proud of you. And this is for you from all of us. So let's give them one more round of applause, y'all. Now you can go. <laughs> Holy Communion is for the community of believers. It is for all of us sinners who recognize we need God's forgiveness. So I ask you, do you recognize that you're a sinner? You're a sinner in thoughts, in your words, in your actions, and that you need God's forgiveness? If so, say yes. I want to remind you before you receive it that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We pray. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord. Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord. In the confession of the one only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity and substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name. To you alone, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. In similar fashion, he took the cup after supper. After blessing it, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink, all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you do this, Do it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you'll lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. I invite you all to have a seat.
please stand. We pray. O God the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son unto the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in the sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. We pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, Glory Be to God the Father. Don't worry, it also talks about the Son and the others <laughs> in this hymn. Let us go. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.